All right, this is lecture two on digital payment systems. Now, this has not been totally updated. Sorry, way too much going on around here. But we're going to talk about a few things on here. So, again, please ask questions if you have them. History of credit. How many of you have credit cards? Most of us have some. You, you, you have one? Okay. How many of you have, like, two or three? Or four? Or five? Or I remember way back when I was turning 18, it was very hard to get. But you used to like walk into Sears and you they would have those tables in Sears where you'd apply for a credit card, and but they were hard to get back then. Nowadays, they're super easy. Way back when, you know, they started giving furniture on credit. You could buy different things on credit. Uh, during Civil War, they had installment plans. I mean, if you think about it, way back even to like the Little House on the Prairie kind of days, they used to have, you know, charge accounts at the store. You know, I'll pay you when the crop comes in. Same kind of thing. Okay. Send it. Ah, oh, this darn thing. Do not show this ever again until next class period. Okay. Uh, stores started giving out credit. Oil companies started giving out credit. I used to have a gas card. And it was for Phillips 66. And back then I really was kind of living paycheck to paycheck. And I would charge all my gas on Phillips 66, even though it cost more money. But it was because it was a card I could charge my gas on and then pay it on payday. So, you know, so it's been, it's been around for a while. Manufacturing company, Farmington Manufacturing Boston, is a charge of plate. There's actually a picture of it up there, I think. Okay. And Diner's Club was actually the first one out there. Birth of the modern credit card. It was initially given to 200 people and accepted 27 restaurants. Does anyone have Diner's Club nowadays? I, I know it's still there. But I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't use that. Okay, used by salesmen, a monthly fee surcharge. You know, there's a lot of cards out there that still charge monthly fees. Um, prime example is United Airlines. They have their rewards card. It's ninety-five dollars a year, but you get free luggage. Hell, if you take two flights a year, it's worth it. Or isn't luggage fifty bucks now? Yeah. Twenty-five bucks. So two flights a year would be worth it. So you know, it's kind of. Tough to think about. But yeah, there's lots of them out there. They all charge some sort of surcharge, which you're going to talk more about, which actually has been changing lately, which we're going to get into that. Okay. Thousands of payment cards in the U.S. I was actually at Ricky's Cafe and more. Some of you might know where that is. Uh, you know, I have a lot of credit cards, but this guy walked up to the cashier. And he played with, I think it was the American Express Blue. I don't know if you've ever seen that card. It's kind of metallic blue kind of looking card and the cashier's like wow that's a cool looking credit card he's like oh check this and he starts bringing up this is the entire pile of credit cards just showing all our credits i'm like wow that's that's kind of crazy okay american express diners club issued by a single institution mastercard and visa are really the biggest you know but it's kind of weird you ever notice like sam's only takes mastercard to discover why would they do that anyone know Hard charge and MasterCard said basically, if you don't accept Visa, we're going to give you a deal. So, but, but I mean, they probably, if they went around with it, they probably have less fees than. And, and it's weird. You can actually still use a Visa debit. You can't use a Visa charge. It's kind of drives me crazy. I go in there, I'm like, darn it, I forgot my MasterCard, you know. But it's still use Discover. And I think last year they actually had the Sam's Club Discover card. Now it's the Sam's Club MasterCard. So it keeps changing, okay? So it says, member banks set interest rates and terms. Members contract out the payment processing, the MasterCard Visa. Basically, they're the network. They're the system to make it work, okay? You don't actually get a card from MasterCard. You get a card from your bank. It's got the MasterCard logo on it, so pretty easy. All right, how many cards are in use nowadays? There's actually a link here. Check it. This is only a, a one-minute video. We've got to watch this video. It's pretty funny. And hopefully I pasted it already. I did.
the Visa check card. Because money shouldn't slow you down. Life takes faster money. Life takes Visa. All right, what do you think of that? I remember that commercial. Yeah, I... Is it true though? Uh, what do you guys mainly use when you go to the store? Debit. 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 Okay. Okay. Hey, what's up, everybody? Today we're going to talk about credit yeah, cards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. 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 Stop Right, credit cards are easier. Um, for a lot of times, they're quicker. What I find that drives me crazy is usually an older person writes a check. And they, they get the cash register, they're putting all their stuff over the cash register. Once it's done, then they reach into their purse. They should have it like pre -filled. Find their checkbook. That's, that's like, dude, you're killing me here. And they got to find the check. And normally, I'm... Done, paid, and everything, even before they left the cash register. So, but yeah, credit cards are getting that way. But I've recently seen it change. Uh, like I said, I do a lot of mystery shopping. In a lot of places, unless it's $3 or $5, they charge you a fee. Or you got to use cash. Actually, the ones I do now, i got 10 new shops i got to go do, and they each one said I must use cash because there's a fee. I used to accept credit cards for my company, and I think it was $0.25 cent transaction fee, which means every time I swiped a card, I paid a quarter, and then there was a percentage, you know, one and a quarter percentage, whatever. Now, that, that stuff is negotiable. I'm assuming Walmart has a better deal than, you know, some dude on the street corner. So, yeah, it's kind of funny how many of us have lots of credit cards right now. So, and I have I have a bunch of them. I use them for different things. Okay? There's actually five cards out there for every man, woman, and child in the world. Why would a child have a credit card? Well, that was the same for that number of people. Um, so, how many cards? What's. They want to have three cards? Four cards? You don't want to? Are we talking about just credit cards? Cause credit or debit. Okay. Yeah, I think I have like five. See, I don't know if you ever watched Dave Ramsey. He's the Financial Peace University. He's really good. And he actually says, you know, you really shouldn't have credit cards. Does he know, you know why he says that? People overspend. People overspend. A prime example is I mean, my son had an orthodontist over on Reno, Dr. Riez, I think. And every month I'd pay him with a check. One month I forgot the checkbook. So I ran to F&B and got cash. I had to pay him 150 bucks. I tell you what, a credit card or a check is so much easier to spend than $150 in cash. Because you don't, you, it's, it's money. It's like, wow, you don't realize how much it is. You overspend with credit cards. You overspend with checks. And they want you to do that. So, but uh, Dave Ramsey says get rid of credit cards. So I actually did. I actually got rid of all my credit cards at one point. But... I sold a lot of computers. And one of my clients, I had to buy $20,000 worth of computers at one time. Card. Tried doing that with a debit card. I had to call the bank, and the bank had to do a temporary authorization so I could do $20,000 worth on it, which they did. That was through Dell. So Dell put the order through. And then when Dell went to actually ship the computers, they went, and Dell is supposed to clear the authorization. What happens is Dell checks to make sure you got money. It's like, hey, we want to charge Ken Dewey $20,000. Then they build the systems, then they're supposed to go in with that same authorization and take their money, but they don't. They make a new authorization for $20,000, and then you have to have a $40,000 limit, which sucks, so I had to go and call them, and get, but pay in the butt, and it was, I said, you know, I, yes, you can use debit cards for everything, but it's, sometimes it's so much of a hassle to do. So, I don't ever use my debit card as a debit card. The reason is... I don't want to get stolen. I mean, you know, you walk up to those cash registers, you can see, it's, I don't care if they got the little shield or not, you can always see people put it in their pins. Credit card, you don't have to worry about it. If someone steals your, if you use it as a credit card and the number gets stolen, well, you're not responsible for anything. Debit card, they can actually wipe out your checking account. So it's, plus I have First National Bank over here and I have to make 12 charges a month. 
kind of weird, but I do that so I get really good interest. I get one and a quarter percent interest on checking, which I'm willing to bet most of you get like 0.01 or something like that, and I get 1.25, so it's actually very high. But it works out really good. So if we only had a mailing address, we could get a pre-approved credit card application, bankruptcy, credit cards accepted. You know, it's just crazy what's going on. Everybody can get one. Even your animals can get darn credit card things in the mail. And what do you think would happen if I took all of these credit card applications, filled them out, changed some information to be my name, whatever, had them sent, or put them in? You think any of them would get approved? Yeah. I bet some of them would. My niece, when she lived with me, she moved back to Connecticut. Shortly after she left here, I went to get a copy of my credit report. Does anyone know where to get your credit report at? If you go to annualcreditreport.com, it's free. It's the only place to go. That will link you to Equifax, TransUnion, and all that. But annualcreditreport.com, well, I went there to get my credit report, and it's like, your address is wrong. What do you mean my address is wrong? I've lived here for 10 years. Well, it turns out, as far as we could tell, she applied for a credit card in my name with her address. And the card was rejected, but it updated my address in the credit bureau. So I had LifeLock at the time, which was actually nice. They went in and fixed it all for me. But uh, I was actually watching on the news. LifeLock is actually being sued. So, Okay. All right. So a lot of different credit cards. It says most internet purchases are credit card transactions, which is the safest way. You get authorization. In the past, I mean, back way before you all were born, I remember we could actually write a check on Monday, and it wouldn't get to the bank until Wednesday. So you could actually float your checks for a couple of days. But now, you know, I have a Chase uh, Capital One credit card and I have an app on my phone. The moment they swipe it, instantly it's on my phone. It shows up, whoop, charge went through. It's like amazing how quick it is. Used to be time consuming, now it's virtually instant, okay? It used to be $50 liability, but pretty much it's zero now. Like my Discover card did get stolen for about $17,000 worth. We think it happened on Crest over here on Reno. Me and Eileen went shopping there one day, and the credit card machine was broken, so they got the old hand scanner out. Shortly after that, someone had made a copy of our card and went shopping at Heritage Park Mall. They went to Lowe's. They went to Home Depot. And contacted, I got a call from Discover Card. I said, hey, Ken, is Eileen currently shopping at Sears, Dillard's, Lowe's, and Home Depot? I'm like, no. Well, they got away with $17,000 worth of stuff. And it sucks. Uh, but I didn't have to pay a penny. And they FedEx overnighted me a brand new credit card. Why would they do that? Because. Did you use it? Because I, I did use it. I mean, I used it for everything. I do. I put everything on there, and I get a lot of, re, you know, whatever, rewards points for it. But only do that if you guys pay it off every month. Yeah, it's, it's like I, I just paid $10,000 for a cruise on the cruise company's credit card. So I got 20,000 points, which means I get cash back to use on the credit. So I'm getting $200 cash. So, But what if I didn't pay it off? Then all of a sudden I'm paying 10, 15, 20, 25% interest on that. And it's, it's not good. Okay. So bank fees between one and 7% really depends on your volume. If you have a large volume, you can negotiate a lower fee. There's also authorization fees. There's sign up fees. There's all kinds of stuff out there. But nowadays there's a lot of them, you know, like the square D, or you can get it, and it's a little thing you put in your cell phone, and it works. You just pay a usage fee is what it is. There's no sign-up fee. It's just a usage fee. So there's a lot of those. One. Yeah, there's a PayPal. There's, virtually everybody has one now. I mean, you're stupid not to. Heck, if they can give you something where you can accept a credit card anywhere, and they can get a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5% fee, why not? My issue is a lot of these places also, you, they'll use the iPad. Or something, right? And then they'll have it on the same Wi-Fi as they give the password to. Their right. Device. They a lot like for those of you on the recording, he was saying that a lot of people have iPads. It's on the same Wi-Fi. That's true, but we're hoping that the the transaction is encrypted between the device and the payment network. Usually they are. Usually it's required to be encrypted. But is each one encrypted differently? I don't know that answer. We would hope it would be. Okay. So, and that's what we said here, internet transactions, encrypted versus unencrypted. Uh, back when I used to run an ISP, I hosted hundreds of websites and had one that certificate got corrupted. 
if you know what a certificate is, it's an SSL certificate, which you guys are going to do a project in. I'll have the project ready once I cover SSL, so you know what we're talking about there. But uh, um, the certificate got corrupted. So if I had left the certificate on his site, what happened was it was said it was an invalid certificate. But it still worked, okay? It's just that it wasn't being authorized through the certificate authority. The other option would be to remove the certificate. It's no longer encrypted, but there's no error. What would you go, if you were a merchant, would you want me to leave the certificate up there that's generating an error, possibly making people go somewhere else, or remove the certificate and let the transactions go for a short period of time without being encrypted? What do you think? Well, I would leave it, but the problem is so many people, you know, if I have a certificate and it expires, it's still encrypting the data. It's just that, you know, the fee hasn't been paid pretty much is what it is. Uh, so, yeah, we, we opted to leave it, I mean, to, to remove it so there was no error. Because as a user, you see an error pop up, you're like, oh, what's going on with it? Like, what's Chrome say? Hurt me plenty if I go to a place with an invalid certificate? Yes, I know what you're doing. Hurt me plenty. Or that's Firefox. No, that's that's, that's Chrome. Chrome. Okay. So it's kind of crazy what they do. All right. Let's talk about the transaction process. There is test questions about this, so you definitely need to know this. Okay. So it's a transaction with a credit card involves five people. Okay. Up to five people. Some of these could be combined. The consumer, that's me. The bank, or the merchant, I'm sorry, the merchant. Then my bank, the merchant's bank, and then some sort of network. Okay, I'm going to show you a picture of it here. Okay, you will need to know this entire steps, so make sure you know this. Number one, I go give my charge card to the merchant. I'm walking into Walmart, I swipe my card or hand it to them, whatever, okay? The merchant, Walmart in this case, gets an authorization from their bank. Says, hey, this Ken Dewey guy wants to get some money, okay? So Walmart asks its bank, Step three, its bank asks my bank, hey, Walmart is asking for money. Does Ken Dewey have money? That's step three. Then my bank, step four, tells Walmart's bank, yes, Ken Dewey has the money. That's step four. Then the, then the requiring bank notifies the merchant, basically goes to Walmart and says, yes, Ken Dewey has the money. So they give me the order. They give me my shoes or whatever I'm buying today. Okay. Then the merchant at that point presents the charges, because remember, that's an authorization first. Think of it like you go to a restaurant. You give them your credit card. They come back, and it's got a certain dollar value on it. Then you normally put a tip on it. So the authorization and the actual charge are different values. Okay. So the merchant presents the charge, and the acquiring bank settles with the consumer's bank. So Walmart's bank contacts me or my bank and says, okay, we need some money now. My bank takes it out of my account, and Walmart's bank gives it to Walmart. Okay. Um, it's, uh, you know, I was actually at the uh, Pilot gas station, Choctaw Road, right where I lived the other day. <clears throat> and they have a new policy, which I wasn't aware of. I don't ever buy gas there. They now put a $120 authorization against your card whenever you buy gas. Even, we're not just talking diesel, we're talking regular gas for a, you know, a person. That's a lot of money. What that means is, so I'm gonna go buy gas, so I put my credit card in there. They immediately authorize to see if Ken Dewey's got 120 bucks. What if Ken Dewey doesn't have 120 bucks? I don't get any gas. What if I only need $10 worth of gas? And I got 100 bucks in my account, just don't have 120. And it sucks. I mean, this guy, I was actually doing a mystery shop at this location, so it kind of looked bad for them. But he was screaming at the merchant. He was screaming at the manager lady there. And she's like, sir, that's our policy. He's like, where is this policy written? So I don't know exactly what happened, but the authorization made it so he couldn't buy something else. And they were screaming at each other. And she's like, sir, I don't care what you think. That's our policy. You're welcome to leave now. It's like, whoa. But it's, it changes. There's no one. The reason they did that, is when gas prices were getting higher, you know, figure, if they, if they authorize 10 bucks on your card, fine, they're going to let you fill up your car. Then they go to process a $100 charge, because some cars take a lot of darn gas, 
and it was four bucks a gallon. You know, that, like my son, I think it's like 35 gallons. It's like, wow, that could be lots of money. Well, if they only authorize 10, then all of a sudden they present $100, then they're kind of stuck. So they should weigh the car right at the thing and be like, all right. How much gas do you need? Yeah. It needs to be a little thing. Okay. <laughs> Give us a picture of your gas tank. How much is in there? How much do you need? But the whole point is they want to make it easier. And, you know, uh, one thing I saw that was different. Uh, anyone been to Sonic lately? Mm -hmm. You notice how a lot of the screens are different now? It's like a huge screen. It's all touch screen. They're no longer asking for zip codes. Mm -hmm. Did you notice that? With the old ones, nearly every time you had to put in your own zip code, which is kind of different. And uh, a lot of that goes based on the amount of charge. Like I bought some stuff at Lowe's this weekend. I think it's up to fifty dollars. You don't have to sign for it. Above fifty, you do. So that's kind of scary. You grab my card, you walk right into Lowe's, charge fifty bucks. Wouldn't even have to present ID or signature. Nothing. So it's kind of kind of scary. What here? Okay, I said something. Okay. Yeah. All right. Here is how to check. Now there is different algorithms on the internet, but this one is valid, okay? You do have an assignment on this, which I will talk about after the, the lecture, okay? It's called the check digit algorithm. You wonder how they can tell instantly if your credit card's valid, okay? You multiply the credit card digits by its weight, and the way the weights are used, it shows better on the next slide, I'll get there, but okay. it's two, one, two, one, two, one, and I'm gonna show you how that works. If this number's greater than nine, you subtract nine, and you add them all up in mod 10. Who's never heard of mod 10? Anybody? Well, no one's going to admit it. Okay, okay, let me explain what mod 10 is. Mod 10 is take the number. So say I had 250 was my number. I mod 10. In other words, I divide it by 10. Okay? It's kind of like if you have the 250, you put the 10 in front, then you put the division symbol over it like you did in high school. How many times does 10 go into 250? It goes in you know, 25 times, and then what's the remainder is going to be, you know, actually 250. Let's we'll just say 25. Yeah, 250 wouldn't work. Say 25. So 10 goes into 25 twice, and there's a remainder of 5. Okay? So mod 10 just means divide by 10. So put the 10 in the front. If the result is 0, it's a valid credit card number. That's all there is to it. If it's anything but 0, it's not a credit card. And the last digit is considered the check digit because it can actually go up or down to make it equal zero. Here's an example. So if the credit card was 3356-1131-4729-9138, what you do is you multiply it by 2121. The way you know what that is, if it has an even number of digits, like MasterCard, Visa, and Discover, you start with a 2. Even digits, start with an even number, 2121, if it's an odd number like American Express, you start with a 1. So even numbers start with an even number. Odd number of digits start with an odd number. Multiply it down. So 3 times 2 is 6. No big deal. 3 times 1 is 3. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 is greater than 9. Subtract 9. Okay? So it becomes 1. Then 6 times 1. We've got that. And the rest, then we got 2, 1, 6, 1. The next one, see, 8, 7, 2, 9... Uh, okay, the next one that makes a difference is the 9138 at the end. 9 times 2 is 18, which is greater than 9. So you subtract 9, you get 9. And then the rest are all the same. Then you add those up. You don't have to add them up in groups like I did. I just did it so you could see. Like the 6316 ends up being 16, and then 2161 ends up being 10. But you add them all up. And in this case, I got 78. Then you modify 10. So you put the 10 in front of the 78 with a division, division symbol there, and you end up with 7 and 8 remainder. It's not 0. It has to be 0 to be valid. Okay? So any number that does not end in a 0 is invalid. That's pretty much it. Okay? So remember, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1. Actually, for your assignment, they're all 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, so you're good. Makes it easier that way. But American Express does start in a one because it has 15 digits. Okay? It's taking them into work and putting them into the credit card machine to see if it works isn't the way you want it done. No, well. <laughs> what about entering the number into an online Oh, I'm totally fine with that. Checker. Totally fine with that. The problem is I'm giving you 100 of them. No, 50 of them. 50 of them. 
In the past, I've actually had the students write a Java program to do this. The problem is it's online. You can just copy the darn yeah. thing, which a lot of people did. So I'm just making you check 50 of them for me. So hopefully at the end of checking 50 of them, you know how to do it, even if it's just putting it into an online checker. But make sure the checker you're using uses this algorithm. There are other algorithms out there. This is called the check digit algorithm. Okay? All right, we'll talk more about that after this. Okay, fees. Transaction charge between 1% and 7% split between the banks and the network itself. So MasterCard and Visa are getting a portion of this as well. Okay? Uh, it's not quite the same anymore, but uh, you know Anthony's TV and Appliance? They've moved many times. Now they're on the corner of uh, Sooner and Reno. Years ago when I bought my refrigerator there, you know, since they're paying a fee, obviously, they're paying a fee for a credit card, you could walk in there and say, hey, I'm willing to pay you cash. What will you give me? How much of a discount? And I got a pretty good discount on my refrigerator. It was 5% maybe, because I think they were paying 6% on the credit card. But what they would do, think about it. If I pay them cash, they're not having to pay the transaction fee or the, tra or the interest rate. So back then, they would actually just do it. Now, it's like, no, nope, can't do that anymore. I'm going to finally take my credit card. I'll get the whatever the reward points are on it. Okay? It says some merchant banks additionally charge a transaction fee. I had to pay 25 cents. It doesn't sound like a lot, but can you imagine if Walmart is having to pay a 25 cent transaction fee? How many people shop at Walmart? That is a serious amount of money. I'm willing to bet Walmart has no transaction fee. They probably just have a surcharge, a percentage. It's probably closer to 1% or less than that because they do a large volume. So it really depends on the volume. Okay. So says issuing banks also make money on annual fees. Most cards nowadays don't charge annual fees because we leave. Hey, you're charging me a fee, I'm out of here. Well, what I would do is I had Southwest, not Southwest, uh, Southwest Airlines. I had their rapid rewards card for a while because you got 50,000 miles for signing up, which was basically a free airline ticket. And it was, they waived the fee for the first year. So what I did was I got the card, used the flight, canceled the card, done. I got a free airline ticket. But they're gambling that people won't do that. So, all right, they're also gambling that, you know, I pay off my credit cards every month. I've probably been paying them off for the last 15, 20 years. Haven't paid interest at all. Do they like that? No. no, they hate that. But they're still getting something. They're not getting the 10, 18, 23% off of me, but they're still getting the one to seven transaction fees. They're still getting money, just not a lot. They're gambling that Ken Dewey will sooner or later not to pay his credit card off, which is not going to happen. Okay. So why would merchants willingly suffer fees? First of all, you know the money's good, usually. And they know they're going to get paid. Yeah, usually. Cash, there are fraudulent bills all the time out there nowadays. What, wasn't someone up in Stillwater recently arrested for counterfeit money? Mm -hmm. Just recently. If you're going to do something, do something they don't check, like your $1 bill, would yeah. you invest it? Yeah, but still, would it be worth it to <laughs> make $1? That would be a lot. Just think about how much you could print. I'd buy that TV <laughs> here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good point. I want to trade in these eight thousand dollars in ones. <laughs> right? Yeah, you could. Right. For all you know, they could think that you're a waitress, and you're like, yeah, I need. But uh, did you notice when you go to cash a check now, you actually over a certain amount, you have to give them a fingerprint. Yep. And you know what got me was, I use the mobile app from my bank. I deposit checks with my phone. I absolutely love it. I just wonder how many people lost their job because of that. But it's limited to twenty five hundred bucks. I went to deposit a three thousand dollar check on my phone the other day. I even wrote in the back, you know, FNB mobile deposit only took it. And I was like, eh. so I had to go to the bank. Oh, you're over twenty five hundred bucks. But then the cashier's like, I can't accept it because you put mobile deposit only. I'm like, you wouldn't take it mobile. So they had to go get some supervisor to override it and take it. But mobile app, they just raised it from the amount that they would hold. Right. If you did it, we used to, if you did over $500 deposit right. in a day, you had to wait. Certainly at the time. But now they've just raised it to like $2,500. Nice. 
Nice. So, what she's talking about is a lot of times when you deposit money, deposit a check, deposit something, you can't have access to all of it right away. Because, hey, it could be bad. So, really kind of, all right, let's continue on. All right, no more cash. This is an older place here. But stores are starting to do this. There are places that are doing this. Credit cards only. No, I mean, there's a lot of places that do no checks. But, you know, there's a lot of places that are starting to go credit cards only. Because, again, they know they're getting their money. Yeah, but, you know, like I mentioned the gas stations earlier. You know, think about it. So I went into the gas station the other day and bought an 89-cent pack of gum because I had to buy something. Okay? But a lot of places say you have to spend a minimum of $3. $5 or whatever. All right, they said there was a 50-cent charge if I spent under $3 because that's what their fee is, 50 cents. So if I had spent, if I bought an 89 cent pack of gum on a credit card, they'd lose 50 cents, which is a large portion of it. So it's, I understand why they do it, but I feel bad. Can I have a receipt, please? Why well, do you want a receipt for an 89 cent pack of gum you paid for in cash? They don't realize that I'm a mystery shopper. I need proof, but they probably do once I ask for the receipt. But a lot of places are going to get this way before long, okay? They want receipts, really. You no, know, you people who do pay in cash and they use their receipts as business expenses. That's true. I piece of gum do. Could be business related expense, therefore a tax deduction. Therefore, that's true. But I don't even need all the receipts for business expense tax deductions. I just have to show my credit card bill. Right, but I guess I have to send a copy of the receipt in but for them to refund me that eighty nine cents. I have to send them a picture. So. <laughs> all right. So uh, credit card transactions a two way street. Okay. Refunds are initiated by the merchant. The reason is, I actually went and returned something the other day. I bought a, a light, a plant grow light, about three years ago, <laughs> which I never used. It was actually still in the package. It was in one of the plastic packaging that needs like, you know, who do you need to open? You've seen those. It's really thick plastic, and you got to, well, I never did use it. Still sealed. So I went back to Walmart. They're like, when did you buy this? Uh, a week ago? <laughs> Two weeks ago, maybe? I didn't say three years. I did check. They still sold them. So they gave me a gift card. But what they normally like to do is if you're returning something, they put it back on the credit card. That way they get refunded the transaction fee and the interest. So, yeah, They you know. didn't give me an option the last time I took something back. They're like, it'll be on your credit card. Yeah, but, which is kind of nice. I like Lowe's. They got the Lowe's app. And it's just like, why would I want this stupid Lowe's app? Well, I like it because if you ever buy anything... I bought some brackets to put a shelf in my house. I need more brackets. Was the shelf level this time? <laughs> yeah, this time, yes. Uh, but uh, I brought, um, I needed some more brackets. And you go to Lowe's, you're like, holy crap, there's 50 kinds of brackets. Which one did I buy last time? You bring up the app, oh, I bought item number seven. And you can grab it quite easily. Plus, you don't need a receipt that way. You just go up there and they just pull it right off. So, kind of handy. Um, fraudulent charges. Uh, I bought something online the other day. From Moby something or other. Probably shouldn't have bought it from them. Uh, but it was a cell phone charger. You know, battery backup. I have one. I love it. I don't use it a lot, but it never fails. You're out, and you have to take pictures in your darn phone stage. Like, crap. Now I can charge it in my car, but if I'm walking around outside the car, you're kind of stuck. So I have one. But they had really cheap. You could buy these other ones. I was going to give one to the kids. Well, it was like 20 bucks. But when they shipped it to me, they didn't pay enough postage. Yeah, so uh, so I had I basically told the post office in the back. So it's it's crazy, and I'll never buy from them again. But yeah, fraudulent charges you can actually fight against any charge. Oh, uh, something happened this weekend. It's not really a credit card, but it kind of is. But a, a lemonade juicer, you know, just to get juice out of lemonades on Amazon to be delivered Saturday. Okay, I don't know if you ever buy stuff on Amazon, you can see exactly when it's delivered and all that stuff. So we were waiting for it Saturday. We were home all, most of the day, so we kept looking. And, and our mailman, our mail lady, had surgery, so we have a temporary mailman. So instead of getting mail at 9 in the morning, we're getting like 8 p.m. now. I don't know what the deal is. But we're waiting, we're waiting, and not getting any mail, not getting this package, we're waiting. So she finds us on Amazon at like 4 in the afternoon. It's been delivered. We're like, been delivered? Been delivered? Where? So we all got side. We've had them stick it in the trash cans before, especially if it's raining hard. So we had trash cans outside, but they put a note. Your package is in the trash can. But there was no note. 
So Virginia thought about it. She's like, wait a minute. The next door house is vacant. Walk over there. Package is sitting on their doorstep plus a pile of mail. Their mailbox has got a pile of mail. All my stuff. Our mailman's delivered to the wrong damn house. I was like, oh, I'm going to kill this guy. But he's doing it the whole entire neighborhood. I got mail for two different neighbors the other day. It's like, is it that hard? I'm not, I have numbers that are like eight inches tall on my mailbox. I, I don't know. I get mail. Like, my, my post, we've got a new mail carrier, and it says this per, this, this family only. Anything right. else to send back. I still get mail for like five other people. They don't it sucks. I want my mail lady to come back. She was awesome. But this other guy, I really need to call and complain about them. I keep you forgetting. Should. Yeah. He sucks. All right. But normally chargebacks can be anything from fraud to I didn't get the item to the item was damaged. And a lot of times, you know, you can actually tell them and they'll send you a replacement, not even send the old stuff back. Bought a stupid headband for stepdaughter for Christmas. Came in broken. They didn't know. Oh, we'll just send you a new one. You know, I bought some A6 tennis shoes. And the sole started coming off. Did you know they got a two-year warranty on those things? I contacted ASICS and said, hey, this sole is coming off of their shoe. They sent me an RMA for them. Yeah, or you're good up to two years. Unless it's been excessively worn. Okay. I'm like, sweet, send them shoes, send me a brand new one. So it's kind of cool. But so, but yeah, chargebacks initiated by the customer. Okay, debit cards. Look branded as your bank. You can get them with your dog's picture, your cat's picture, your kid's. I could care less. I just It's a damn credit card. I don't care what's on it. Yeah. That always drives me crazy. When you, like, discover, like, what would you like on your card? Numbers so I could use it? No, what picture? <laughs> I could care less with. And discover, I have the discover it card. I don't know if you have that one. The darn strip's on the wrong side. So basically, when you read it, the front, it says discover. So you think the back, the strip will be at the top. No, it's at the bottom. Every time you hand something, they go to scan it. Oh, they have to turn it on. It's like, I don't know why they did it. It's stupid. Okay. <laughs> so you could discover it. Yes. I got it because they give a better uh, rebate. It's uh, 1%. But now I also have the Capital One, which is 1.5%. Mm -hmm. Might not sound like a lot, but December, I got $1,200 in reward cash. I'm like, yeah, I'll take $1,200. Bucks. It's not bad. So. It's Christmas. Yeah, put everything on it. So. All right. But debit cards, they are charged immediately, okay? Immediately from your bank. It's said cleared over different networks, different rules, liability. You could actually lose your entire balance depending on how it's used, okay? I went to Europe two years ago, and I was looking for a way to get money in Europe, getting euros. So what do you think the easiest way to get money in euros is? Uh, with the bank with, uh, where they have conversions. I actually went there and bought a little bit, but that's not the cheapest place. Cheapest place is my credit, my debit card. I actually checked. I did a lot of checking before I went there because we bought initially we bought like hundred dollars worth at one of those banks that does the conversions, but there's a fee for that. Mm -hmm. Turns out my debit card working at a foreign ATM was a much lower fee. So I was like, so wait, because my bank gives free ATM transactions, but but the you know so they refunded that three dollar fee but then the the percentage the charge for that was so low, I just can only do like you know four hundred dollars a day, so I had to go back for a couple of days in the road to get all the cash I needed for the whole trip. But yeah, I went to my bank and asked, and I even went to my travel agent, and we turned out that was the cheapest way to do it. So that was where, different. Where at in Europe did you go? Flew into Spain and went to France, Italy, Venice, Rome, all that stuff. So. I spent seven years over there anyway, so I'd, I'd been to Rome like five times, six times, I think. So, yeah, I was in the military. I've been to Italy 17 times, I think. I was like, the island of Sardinia, which is now a resort, used to be a military base there. I used to go there all the time. Now it's different. But whole another story. Okay. Internet payment systems. We're going to talk about a few of them. There are a lot more now, okay? There's credit cards, virtual payment, e-cash, payable. We're going to talk about those, but there's obviously we know there's a whole bunch of them. I just didn't have a chance to put them all in here. We can't do anonymous. We can do private or identifying. We're going to talk about those. Basically, it's who knows what you're doing or who can see what you're purchasing. Okay, virtual PIN, 1994. It's not around anymore, but it's really a credit card system. No special software, no encryption, but it came in through email. Not really a good plan, okay? But really kept your credit card off the internet, okay? 
basically you, you, you subscribe, then you got an email, then it would actually send emails back and forth if you want to buy stuff. You know, kind of reminds me of, uh, I got gift cards this year, like for the garage, and Papa John's, you know, there are e-gift cards. I've never seen those before. But you did if you buy 25 bucks, you got 10 bucks back, so I got a whole bunch of free gift cards that way. But it's actually through email. And I print it out. And I go to the garage, and they, actually, they can't scan it there. But they type in the number, and it tells them how much is left on it, and they withdraw from it. So I just, every time, just reprint it out. So kind of reminds me of that, but it's not through email. Okay. Purchasing, you give the merchant the pin, then the merchant sends the pin, gets an authorization that comes back yes or no. It, it, it really wasn't a good plan, and it pretty much died. Okay, no encryption. Is email secure? No, no not at all. Easy to spoof, copy, you know, all kinds of stuff. Liability issues. There was just a lot of lot of issues, but it was anonymous. They didn't know who you were. Okay. Digicash, developed by this doctor dude, with eCash, they had tokens similar to the Bitcoins we have now, which there's so much going on with those. Okay, okay you download their software, you install it, okay, it was tied to your bank, deposit real money in this system, then you use it, then you get digital cash, which is XORD, which is not critical for this class, but the coins are sent, then the dollar value is basically what you use on, and what's XORD with that, and they really can't trace it back to you. Good idea, again, but not so much. You know, I don't know, even Bitcoins. You know, you can actually buy a system on there that will generate Bitcoins. So if you spend enough time, it'll literally generate enough. It just creates random stuff until they get some that work. It's like, Roy was showing me the other day, it was like $15,000, and it drew a massive amount of electricity but yeah, it's guaranteed to produce so many coins a minute. So you could actually just run, bring, I think, bring this machine to row state, use row state's electricity and just generate money. But probably not the best plan. So no, we didn't do that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, you basically use their wallet to communicate. So it really didn't happen. Okay. And anonymous, we talked about that, all right. Cybercash, again, had a web interface. Never lets them see. You notice a lot of these are anonymous, which is actually a very good thing. Even the Apple Pay now is pretty much anonymous. Does anyone ever use Apple Pay? I'm one of the doesn't like it yet. Okay. Well, I have a couple credit cards that work with it, so it works fine at Subway. You go there, and you basically just pay with your phone, and it actually generates a one-time use credit card number that... It's the transaction, and it's pretty handy because it, you know, no one knows who I am. The credit card number is a one-time use. Actually, Discover had that. Discover had that for a while too, but it kind of went away. But Cybercash was purchased by Verisign. Okay, you download the software, okay? and then you enroll your credit cards and work with IE, which obviously knows what. You know, IE's going away. Yes. What's your new one called? Spartan what is it? Spartan, Spartan Project. Spartan yeah. Project. Okay, I couldn't remember the name. Yeah. But uh, so, again, another thing that kind of went away, you purchase with it, again, it's, it's pretty much gone. You don't need to worry about that one. Now, PayPal, this is the one that's still out there. Okay? PayPal was not originally owned by eBay, but it is now. Uh, my son pays his rent every month with this. And you can either have pay. So my son, I don't know how he's linking his. He could link straight to his checking account, which means it's free. Doesn't cost him nothing. Doesn't cost me nothing. Or he could link it to his credit card, and then he would pay a fee. But you know, it really depends. But yeah, PayPal. I get every month. That's how he does it. He never pays on time. I was Nick. You gonna pay your rent? Two minutes later, I get an email from PayPal. You got seven hundred dollars. So, all right. So, again, bought by eBay, credit card processors enable merchants to receive credit cards and other payments. Yeah, and it's very, very simple. It actually works quite well. And they're always adding new stuff. It seems like every day, you are now approved for this new offer from PayPal. No, I don't want it. Okay. They have a bookkeeping. You can even integrate shopping carts through PayPal for free. And obviously, they're going to charge a fee at the end, but the whole shopping cart system is free. Financial Hub, the links your information. Credit cards, debit cards, bank accounts, all kinds of stuff. Uh, 
their new updated app. I don't know if anyone's used it. And my son paid me his rent. I tried to figure out how to transfer it to my bank. I could not do it on the app. Maybe I'm an idiot. I couldn't find it. I'm like, where did they move it? I had to go into the website to do it. Because I don't think they want me to transfer it out. I think they want me to leave it in there. It's like, where is this? There was no withdrawal button. So I went on the website and finally found it. But kind of handy system there. We all know, hopefully you know how it works. Do it through email. You can send someone money through email. I bought a lot of stuff this way. Remember way back when Wii's were popular? I bought one via PayPal. Some guy only accepted PayPal. Nobody knew. I just paid him on PayPal. And since I have it linked to my bank account, it doesn't cost me a penny. Can have a link to my credit card. There's a fee at that point. Okay. So credit card processes. It works with your bank. You can see your balances. You can see who your payments came from or who you paid. It's pretty simple to do. It's a bookkeeping. You can see what came in, what went out, pretty much everything. And what's also nice, if there's an issue with it, they're very good to fix it. You can go on there and say, no, I didn't make this charge. I actually had that issue, what, two years ago, and there was a big PayPal scam out there. There's like seven charges that came through. So I went on there, and I said, I didn't make these charges. And they said, no problem. You'll be, your money will be credited back in account within 48 hours. And it was done. That's all it took. So pretty easy to do. Okay. So financial help that works with pretty much everything. Email address, credit card numbers work with. Yeah. It's kind of nice. I can pay with my email address this way. Okay, and there's actually some stores, there's, what store, right? is it Lowe's, or, no, it's Home Depot, who accepts PayPal at Home Depot now. Mm -hmm. So it's, just put in your email address and pay. Dollar General also accepts PayPal now. Nice. Yes. So it's kind of cool, you can send money, you can receive money, shipping, you can do auction tools, you can just do all kinds of stuff through PayPal. Again, these pictures are all changed. It, it seems like weekly their site's changing, I don't know what the deal is. But yeah, you can send money through it, you can see your overview. You can do all kinds of management options with it. So you can do auctions through it. You can sell stuff through PayPal. There's a lot of websites. You sell just a few things. Like say you have somebody house you want to sell, you can actually sell it through PayPal. You actually link PayPal straight to your credit card. I mean, not your credit card, to your shopping cart page, and it goes right to it. So pretty simple to do. Okay. All right, that's, that's the end of this lecture. I'm going to stop this, and we'll talk about your assignment.